Well, you guys were right. These are timbers that we're going to use on Orca. Now, we've got four of them, and we've moved a few of them inside already. And uh, I have to process them from here because, you know, I always hoped I would get two nice straight timbers out of that log and maybe two curved ones, and that's pretty much what I've got. So, you know, I'm going to show you how we go about processing them. And you can see I'm wheeling them in on these casters. It's a pretty large timber, and I can't be picking it up, but I've got everything we need to do it. You know, you just have to, when you take them off a truck, you want to put them down on something so that they're up off the ground so you can get a pallet jack underneath them or a forklift underneath them. So rather than have a forklift on duty here, the pallet jack and these casters just work terrific. These are some really nice timbers right here. Some nice Quercus Alba timbers, the real thing. And there's some nice sections as, uh, you know, we expect to get most of the center line out of these timbers right here. That would be the keel, the forefoot. Well, we're rolling now here. Maybe the gripe and the stem. And then we'll be going back to the mill for more because we're going to have to purchase some for our horn timber and stern post. And I'm going to show you how I go about, you know, uh, straightening them out planing them smooth on one side and squaring them and whatever it is I have to do because I'm going to take them down from like seven and eight inches down to uh, six by six. So I'm going to get the best out of it. I'm going to cut the worst off and the best will remain. That's what I'm up to inside here. Now those are some timbers right there. Beautiful keel timbers for Orca right there. So we got some big things happening right around the corner here with Orca and these timbers. But right away, what I have to do is finish up this 23-footer. You know, I'm laying up these other knees for the corner here, you know, these larger knees. I got one all set up and glued, and this is the last one right here. And, uh, you know, I'm doing it a little bit differently this time. I've poured the glue out on the table because that way it doesn't go off. I learned some things from the first one, not to be stingy with the glue, that's one thing, because you can't go fast enough. You know, you're trying to spread it thin or get it around there as good as you can, it just doesn't work out well. You want to use plenty of glue. So I learned that, but this system that I came up with with the nails really worked well the first time, and it's working really well this time. The worst thing it can have is not enough glue and hold you up so you can't make speed. So this works out good. The, the blue line should be nice and thick and it all squeezes out anyhow. And you know, when it squeezes out like that, it looks like it would be a pain to clean up, but really it's no different than cleaning just a little bit up. I take a, a brush and cut the bristles off short and I just use it like a kind of a trowel and just clean the edges right off. And uh, you know, it's all cut off afterwards anyhow. Well, it's the next day, and we're back aft here with our lodging knees, and, uh, you know, they're all laminated up, you know, they've dried, and uh, I fit one in place. I had to cut the frame off, the first frame, and the corner post in the corners. That's what I'm going to do over here, but uh, that one's all fit. I took a bevel from the side to the bottom of the knee, and the bevel from the uh, knee to the transom. It was very easy to fit them. I, I made one straight cut on a bevel, I put it in place and just kind of scribed the transom, so no pattern or anything like that, and it worked out. I've got some lines on the frame right here, one on the forward face and one on the inboard face. I'm going to cut that frame head off right on those two lines there. Now, I'm going to use one of those vibrating multi-tools because that's a, probably the easiest tool that you could use. I could cut this one off numbers of different ways, but... This one's not going to be quite so easy because it's in the corner, so you have to be really careful. Now, I don't have a hand tool or any kind of other saw or anything that would cut that off. I'd have to knock that off with a hammer and chisel, and I, I don't think it would be pretty. So this vibrating tool is a really a nice thing now. It's a little tricky to use, especially when you don't use one all the time. They're very aggressive, so like when you get started, you can get started wrong real easy. Then you have to keep trying to correct yourself before you get going anywhere. So it pays to get started very slowly and make sure you're on the line on both lines before you continue. So we're going to cut off this frame and the corner post so that the knee fits right up on top of them. This is our starboard lodging knee right here or the foundation for it, or the laminates, and all of this will be cut right off so you won't see any of this, and it's going to be kind of cut down to about here. So I'll cut these nail holes right off, and then the uh, in whale is going to be let into it, and then the cap will go right over the top of it and extend all the way aft. So, you know, a little different than I usually do it, but 
This is the top laminate right here with the figuring in it right here, you know. So uh, it's going to look like that on both sides, kind of matched grain. And I think it looks great. It really is kind of fun. This stuff is tough to work with, but, uh, you know, once we get this one fit on top of that, we'll be gluing the two together and fastening them in place together. So, you know, it's just kind of a little procedure I came up with that makes it a little bit easier for me. I had cut this in the bandsaw, uh, a, a little bevel on the side and another bevel for back aft. And, uh, you know, it fit pretty nice, but I had to go over it with electric plane. Pretty hard to plane this stuff because all the laminates are in different directions, like with a hand plane. If you tried to fit that with a hand plane, that would be difficult. I actually fit that to that tight of a fit with an electric hand plane. And uh, you have to have the blades set exactly right, and you have to have the thing adjusted exactly right. But you'll see it, it cuts really nice, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the other knee. And what's going to happen, too, is I'm going to actually let these frame, this frame and the corner frame into the bottom of the knee, because this is going to be down maybe three-eighths of an inch from here. It'll fit exactly the same. It's just going to move down a little All bit. All I have to say about limit. this is you got to get started slowly. You know, the machine is on slow and I'm on slow because I don't want to get going in there in the wrong angle or anything like that. You kind of have to establish like a platform for the blade. You know, once you get that figured out, it's kind of easy to follow it, but you can't get going wrong. You know, and the other thing is, is that uh, I'm running out of depth here, so I have to cut a little triangle off there and then uh, turn my blade upside down because that double thickness part of the blade has to extend in there where that triangle's cut out. And then you have to be real careful you don't go too far because, uh, you know, you'd be cutting into what you don't want to cut into. So it's pretty, pretty delicate stuff with these machines right here. I didn't really realize that the piece was still screwed on through the gunnel like that, so I kind of thought it would pop right off, but it, it's not going to do that until I back that screw out, and uh, you know, then I'll tap the screw out, but it's on to the corner post. Now the corner post is even more tricky. It really pays in a situation like this, even on the first one, to have your elbows like planted on your knees or something like that, something that you can replicate every time you approach it, so you can get at the right height to do the work properly. If not, you're just fumbling around. You can't do that. It's part of the guidance system. You are the guidance system. So once I get in there, you know, quite a ways, I have to start being careful in the end. And, you know, it's funny because the blade is exactly the right width so that if I'm trying to follow along the transom, I can just see the blade sticking out on my side of the cut and I know I'm not in there too far. You know, it's kind of cheating almost, but the blade happens to be exactly the right width. So it works out pretty good. And then I still have to cut my little uh, triangle out of there to get to the end. And I'm being very, very careful because I could cut right into the transom easily or into the side plank, and, and I don't want to do that. So, you know, there it is. It came right off. A couple little pieces to cut off, and the show's over. I like this here. This, uh, Last little bit there. Well, here's our lodging knee right here. I'm going to just set it in place in there, and I don't expect it to fit. You know, it's got to be cut to fit, and uh, I'm just setting it there like that. That's how it's going to sit. First thing I'm going to do is just draw a line down this side right here, a nice straight line, and I've picked up the bevel underneath the other one, same as this one. So I'm going to cut that to bevel first, and that'll fit right up against there. It might need a tiny tune-up with my electric plane, but just very, very little, really. Once that's fit, I'm going to put it back in place, and I'm going to scribe uh, a line across the transom right here, and I've got the bevel set for that, so I can set my bandsaw for of that, and I'll cut that across, and, uh, you know, it'll fit really, really good right then. So now I'm just going to grab my yardstick here, and I'm just going to put it up near the line, like that. Just going to make sure this knee doesn't fall down on me while I'm doing it. And I've got a couple marks on there. It's going to be just like that. I've got my little pencil. I'll draw a quick line right down there. Now that's the line I'm going to cut, the first line. Then we'll make this cut later. All right, I'm going to slide this up like that. Now I'm going to set my bandsaw to the proper angle here. I've got it set on my bevel set, so I just adjust the table a little bit when it's there, tighten it up, and make that first cut on that bevel right there.
Now I'll lower down my top guide because I had it way up when I set the bevel, but I want to pull it down before I start cutting. And it just helps your guide it along straighter, that's all. It, the, the saw doesn't wander, but you do. So you have to be careful making a cut like this. And uh, I don't want to have to tune it up too much when I'm done. I just want to be able to glide across at me with an electric plane and straighten it right out. And I've gone over how I set these things up and will again, but uh, look how good it's cutting. You know, uh, it's very simple. It's just a matter of being patient. Be nice and patient because you're only going to make this cut once. You don't want to drift over the line, that's for sure. You know, if you left a little bit too much, that wouldn't be the end of the world, but to take too much away, that wouldn't be good. So that's why I'm being as careful as I'm being right now. I'm gonna take my electric plane, and I'm not gonna do a whole lot of work with it, really. And I'm not gonna lose track of the saw cut. The very depth of these saw cuts is exactly where I'm gonna stop. You know, it's not gonna get carried away and change the angle or anything else. It's just a matter of smoothing it up. When I touched up that first cut a little bit with the electric plane, I don't expect it to be perfect yet here, but yeah, it has a little tiny bit of a lump in the bottom of it. So I'm gonna go back to the horse and give it a couple more swipes and it should fit. Rather than start on the edge right here, I'm gonna start down in here, and then it'll start gradually cutting a little bit more and then run out back in here. So let's see how it works here. Now let's see how nice this fits. I think it's gonna fit quite a bit nicer now. I'm gonna pull it in with this clamp. It's kind of drooping down there a little bit, so get that clamp on there. Watch this. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it looks pretty tight right in there. Really nice, actually. So, uh, you know, the covering board's gonna cover it anyhow, but I just want it to fit. That's the way I am, so. Now I'm gonna go back here and draw a line right across here. I'm just gonna put my steel rule on there, hold it down nice and neat, and make a line on this side of it. Now I'm gonna take that to the bandsaw and cut that on the proper angle. Now I'm gonna reset my bandsaw to the proper angle for the transom cut. Loosen it up a little bit more there. All right, that's good right there, perfect. Making a cut like this is fun for me. You know, I hear people always saying, what side of the line do you cut on? Do you leave the line? Do you cut it away or whatever else? I don't know. Confuses me. I cut half the line away and leave the other half. To me, that's the way it should be done. And, you know, I'm not pleased unless it comes out that way either. So, you know, when you do move your hands, you kind of have to stop because I think that's one of the mistakes people make is when they go to move their hands around, they're still moving the piece. That doesn't work. You know, you have to stop and then move your hands and then get going again. You know, otherwise you, you're going to fumble. Yeah, look how tight that is. That's right off the band, so a cut hasn't been tuned up at all, but I'm going to tune it up. Well, look how tight that is. That's without a fastened or anything like that. So it's gonna fit really, really nice, completely done. The next thing for me to do is copy on the corner post on the bottom of this knee and the frame. And I'm gonna notch it into the knee a little bit so that this knee will lower down a little bit. It'll fit exactly the same, but it'll be down about 3 eighths of an inch so that I can put my top laminate on there and glue it down on top there. <laughs> 